Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the ninth episode of my 17 part series on getting a great smokel mound. Haha, <laughs> I tricked you! Aw, I'm sorry. Anyway, this series is a crash course on best practices you need to know to get good results in a home recording environment, from performance to recording to mixing. In my last tutorial, I discussed four helpful tools to improve your vocal recordings. If you haven't already seen this video, go check it out. Today, I'll go over some extra tips to help your recordings sound even better. So let's get started. Extra tips! I should have mentioned this first part in the section on mic placement, so I'll talk about it now before I get into the other tips. When placing your mic and your performer in the room, make sure your vocalist and mic position are exactly how you want them to be before you start recording. This is very important. Changing your mic or vocalist position will alter the sound of the recording, so be sure to have everything finalized. This will make the audio editing process much easier, as each recording you make won't sound wildly different from the rest. That being said, it's not fair to expect your vocalist to remain rooted to the spot the whole time. Like, what if they need a break, or have to use the restroom? That's why you mark the position of your vocalist and your mic stand on the floor. Usually you do this with tape, another reason to record on a rug. Marking your vocalist's position ties into the first of the extra tips I'll be discussing here, making your vocalist comfortable. A vocalist won't give a good performance if something is making them uncomfortable. It's your job to make sure that doesn't happen. Basically, treat the vocalist like they're a guest in your house. Make sure they always have something to drink. Take breaks as needed. Be friendly and personable. Don't just be quiet the whole time you're working. When setting up, ask your vocalist about the temperature and lighting. Many vocalists actually like their performance space to be a bit darker. Also, many performers feel like they're being judged when they can see someone watching them. You can help fix this by monitoring their performance with your back to them, or by monitoring in another room. When giving feedback on a performance, be nice about it, and give constructive, helpful criticism. Instead of just saying, do it again, say, that was good, now try adding this. Finally, don't forget to smile. All these little things reduce stress on your vocalist, and help them feel comfortable and confident in the recording space. Next tip, capturing the good parts. Your performer is probably not going to get it 100% perfect on the first try. This is completely normal. You just have to record in such a way to account for a few slip-ups here and there. If you're recording something like a podcast or a voiceover, or a tutorial video, you can use what I call the redo method. When you've got your performers situated and warmed up, hit the record button and have your vocalist start performing. If they make a mistake, or if the line could be delivered differently, give them some advice and have them say the line over again. Then keep going, redoing any mistakes as needed, until you've recorded all their lines. Don't start and stop the recording each time a mistake happens. Just do it all as one big recording. It's easier to edit out the slip-ups than it is to manage a whole bunch of little files. On the other hand, if you're recording for a song, I recommend the full take method. Again, make sure the performer's warmed up and ready before you press record. However, rather than stopping every time the performer makes a mistake, just record the whole performance in one go, from the start of the song to the end. This helps keep your vocalist in the right musical mood, even if they're just standing there doing nothing during the intro of the song. To cover for any slip-ups, you do multiple recordings or takes, giving advice to the performer before each one. But how many takes should you do? 5, 10, 20, 50? Nope, just 3. Three takes, not counting the scratch vocal, should provide more than enough material to edit out the slip-ups, as each take will likely have errors in different places. Try to avoid doing more than three takes, though, as performers start to get tired after more than a couple full takes. Plus, the more takes you do, the more time you'll have to spend editing later, which is not fun. Trust me. As an important side note, tell your performer up front how many takes you're doing, and make sure you stick to that number. Because they only have a limited number of tries, the vocalist will be motivated to focus and do their best. This little bit of pressure can be just what a vocalist needs to give a great performance. This last tip is more on the technical side, gain staging. Gain staging is the process of working through the signal path of the audio and making sure that everything is at an appropriate volume level without any overloads. Overloading, known as peaking or clipping, is what happens when the volume level going into a device is too much for it to handle. Just like you can hurt your ears if you hear an extremely loud noise, different devices in the signal path have a maximum loudness that they can tolerate, and anything above that point is an overload. Basically, a very loud sound wave can be too large for a device to manage, and any part of the wave that goes outside of the device's maximum range is abruptly cut off or clipped. This clipping effect causes the sound wave shape to change and distort, which alters the way the audio sounds. I'll be talking about how to properly create distortion in a later video, but for now, I'll just say that letting your audio clip is not the way to do it. Clipped vocals almost always sound like garbage. 
case in point. This is what clipping sounds like. Sounds pretty awful, doesn't it? What's worse is that once a recording is clipped, there's almost nothing you can do to fix it. So how do you prevent clipping? By practicing gain staging. Go through each piece in the signal path, starting from the microphone and going to the audio interface, the DAW, the effects plugins, and the headphones, and check that the signal isn't even close to the maximum for that piece. Clipping can happen at any stage, so you have to check them all. Most pieces of software and hardware come with a built-in peak meter, which you can use to see the volume level going into the device. Many of them also come with an input or output volume control, sometimes called trim or gain. But what about your mic? Some mics have a volume control knob or an input pad switch that turns the signal down. If yours doesn't, try checking the audio settings on your computer to see if you can turn down the mic volume there. Failing that, you can adjust how loud your performer is and how close they are to the mic. By making sure that the loudest parts of your audio are reading at about two-thirds of the way to the top on all pieces in your signal path, you should have plenty of room for the signal to vary without overload. This is probably one of the easiest yet most overlooked things you can do to improve your recording quality. Recording at lower volume levels will make a huge difference. If you want even more recording information, including how to record things that aren't vocals, check out Bobby Ozinski's audio recording techniques tutorials on lynda.com, or check out Graham Cochran's blog, The Recording Revolution. Links to both of these in the description. Before I go, I'll leave you with this thought. If you remember nothing else from this video, remember this. Recording is an art form. It takes a lot of practice practice, but it gives you a ton of creative power. Learn to use it well, and your work will stand out from the rest. Anyway, that's about it for the recording section of Getting a Great Vocal Sound. If you liked what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about what I've covered here, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And if you'd like to request a VoxFX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. The next video marks the start of the mixing section. I'll explain what mixing is, discuss some useful digital audio concepts, and reveal the number one rule of vocal mixing. Hint, it's different from the number one rules of performance in recording. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Except that. <laughs>